Hello out there in the community. It's Chris. It's the Mad Respect. I'm back again. Um, got a double unboxing here. Uh, the last couple of weeks of uh, March came in from the Discount Comic Book Service as well as uh, some FOC books from Economics and Comics, uh, who I use exclusively for my uh, catch-all FOC reveal type of books. That's what I'm now using exclusively to order those types of books. We'll discuss economics and economics further when we unbox the package. Uh, but we'll start the video out, as I always do, by discussing a few of the comics uh, I received the last time. Uh, we'll start with uh, the conclusion of a few series here, starting with uh, The Agent of World from Scout Comics by Dennis Camp with art by Philia Bratukin. Uh, this is a really good issue. I wouldn't say it's necessarily my favorite finale to a miniseries I've read in recent times, but as a father, I did appreciate uh, the content within, uh, which is basically, what would a father do uh, to make things right for their child? So, in, in particular, this is his daughter in this issue and what he does to uh, uh, gain a kind of petty revenge for his daughter. Uh, I can relate to that as a father of uh, a daughter of a female. But now they are non-binary. They are my child. All right. Another series that ended was Art Brute. Uh, from Image Comics, from W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo, from Ice Cream Man, uh, and the colors are by Matt Lopes. And then there's backup stories with colors by uh, uh, Good Old Neon, I believe. Well, not the Good Old Neon. Can't remember who the colorist on Ice Cream Man is. I know the letters are Good Old Neon. I think. Oh, it's not going to get to the front page for me. Where is it? So we're recording this, huh? Nah. Damn, this comes as long as I'm quick. Chris O'Halloran. Chris O'Halloran does the uh, backup colors for the final story, which ends kind of like how every issue starts. With, uh, with that color scheme ends with that color scheme into the back cover. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, this was originally a series or a graphic novel titled The Electric Subline, which I believe came out of IDW few years back, but they reproduced it at Image, since they are now all working at Image with Ice Cream Man, uh, and retitled it Art Brute and added uh, extra backup stories. But this kind of has a very satisfying but uh, sad uh, conclusion. So recommend uh, that when it comes out into trade and hasn't read it. Uh, let's get into an uh, ongoing series, starting with the return of Noctera with issue number 12. This is by Scott Snyder with Tony S. Daniel on the art. Uh, this is cover B by Jay Lee, and it's a uh, homage of sorts to uh, his uh, Something is Killing the Children number one uh, variant, and then he also did a House of Slaughter uh, cover variant for this, and other titles, I believe he's used this type of uh, homage to Something is Killing the Children in the past. Uh, but this... Uh, uh, it basically, thematically, through reading the stories, I, I presume this is the final arc of Noctera, although it hasn't been uh, publicized as such. But uh, I do believe this will be the final arc of uh, Noctera here, and it kicks off pretty much with a pretty good bang. Uh, Val uh, got lost to the Shades at the end of the previous arc, but she is uh, kind of turned into a character more akin to Blacktop Bill now. Uh... And so she is uh, able to still uh, be with the Sundog Convoy. Uh, and now they're going to uh, try to break into uh, uh, EOS, I think it's called, uh, and get the scientists to uh, distribute the cure and turn on the sun and uh, remove all of the uh, shades from the earth. But unfortunately, standing in their way uh, is the return of Blacktop Bill, who now has... Uh, the terrifying uh, new power of one-touch uh, transformation from human to shade. Uh, but he hasn't turned into a mindless shade. He's still uh, 
the same uh, witty, sarcastic bastard he's always been, but we'll see uh, if he means our, our, uh, our squad uh, good or ill in the second part. This new series called No Breaks. Here is a continuation of Trojan. This is from AWA Upshot from Danielle Krause with art by Lacey. Uh, this is uh, the main cover by... Uh, what's his name? Oh, me killing me on a uh, on, uh, flip side. And uh, Mark to call. Mark to call. D call. I believe it's day call. Maybe it's... I think it has like a has a little dishy for French pronunciation, so day call. But Jeff Day Call main cover. Uh, this series uh, finally uh, steps on the gas. There's quite a lot goes on within and sets up the finale uh, very nicely and bloodily, and I really enjoyed it. Here is House of Slaughter issue number thirteen. This is the uh, middle act of our. Uh, third story arc, which is titled The Butcher's Return, which, uh, 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 based on, uh, I can't remember anything this morning, uh, it's based on, uh, oh wait, okay, I don't have to bring it up, it's based on Jace Boucher, who was the, uh, secondary character in the first arc, which was based mainly on Aaron, and, uh, this is, uh, Jace Boucher is, uh, training up a new group of children, but he's trained them just to uh, be wary of the monsters, but not actually to become hunters, just to be... He just wants to create a new family of safe, uh, aware uh, children. But then uh, his former house, the house of... Uh, the house of... Uh, it's not Boucher, it's something. Butcher, the house of Butcher, duh, he's Butcher. Uh, yeah, the house of Butcher... They come and they abduct one of his uh, children under his care, and he has been tracking uh, this child as he has taught all his children, Jace has taught all his children, to leave uh, breadcrumbs of a sort. If they're ever lost uh, or abducted, so he's following them, and meanwhile, uh, the House of Butcher is lying to this little child and saying he just has to come in and have dinner and spend the night, and then he'll they'll return back to Jace, but really they're they're putting him through the uh, initiation trial, which is basically at the House of Butcher, they put you to bed and then let a monster into your room while you're sleeping, and then you have to wake up and destroy this monster, and that is your initiation into the House of Butcher. And that's exactly what happens at the end of this issue. He wakes up, the monster's in his room, and Jace uh, has a conversation with another excommunicado of the House of Butcher and says, what are my chances of getting my child back? And the guy's like, pretty much none, and you're probably going to die trying to uh, retrieve him. And he's like, well, damn it. Uh, I guess that's what it's going to have to be. I have to go save him. And then also, my most exciting part of this issue is it's the return of Maxine Slaughter from Book of Slaughter. If you read Book of Slaughter, Maxine Slaughter was one of the white masks who uh, went to clean up Archer's Peak at the time of Aaron's death when he died uh, in issue 9 of Something is Killing the Children, and she uh, collected his mask. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Aaron's totem and Jace's totem have been telling Jace that uh, Aaron is still alive, that he's fine, but I believe they've obviously been lying to him. I didn't realize if this series was taking place in current continuity with the Maxine, but Maxine does appear in this issue, visiting the House of Butcher, uh, so I assume she, uh, when he visit, when Jace gets to the House of Butcher, Maxine may still be there wearing Aaron's mask, and then the shit will hit the fan, and I'm really looking forward to that uh, coming up in House of Slaughter. Here's a 2-4 for Hulk. This is Hulk number 12, and my cover of uh, March here, uh, the Steve McNiven homage to Todd McFarlane's Hulk number 340. Uh, only thing they could make it better is if this was Titan, uh, reflected in the blades and not the Green Hulk. But, uh, these are the penultimate issues of, uh, Donny Cates' original Hulk run, which has become, uh, uh, Ryan Otley's run. Uh, Cates is listed as a co-plotter on 12, and this is all Otley here. Well, in these two issues, you discover who, uh, created the mindscape and the spaceship aspect of this current arc of Hulk and who created the mind, uh, temple and such. Uh, and it 
leaves off with uh, Titan uh, taking the wheel and about to kick some holy ass and uh, about to kill Stephen Strange's uh, spirit form. So uh, very uh, exciting build up to what should be the, uh, hopefully a great final issue of that run. And a lot of people have liked that run. Uh, art has been exceptional all the way through. I think my favorite part of the whole arc was the Hulk versus Thor uh, Banner of War uh, crossover. That was, that was, I thought that was especially well done, except the end kind of tailed off and was co-written by Daniel Warren Johnson for some reason uh, and was delayed heavily. So by the time you got to the final part, it was like... But overall, that story uh, was the strongest of this Hulk run. And the final book I'm going to discuss from my last box is a new number one is No One from Image Comics and uh, Black Market Narrative, The Massive Verse with uh, Radiant Black. Uh, this is also tied to a, uh, a podcast which has uh, uh, voice actors such as uh, uh, Patton Oswalt and Rachel Ray Cook. Uh, and I'm go now that I've read the issue and I'm kind of invested in what's going on, I, I will probably, uh, if it's free, that is, I will probably give the podcast a listen between now and issue number two. Uh, pretty cool. It's a... Uh, it basically puts you into the middle of a, a narrative and doesn't hold your hand as as you uh, pace your way through the issue. Uh, there's definitely a big backstory to this series that uh, is going to be slowly uncovered as it goes on. And the characters uh, all know each other and of the events, but you are uh, learning it through their eyes as it goes. But basically... Uh, there's a police commissioner whose son, uh, uh, his son, uh, confessed to, uh, murders, and our main character, No One, is, uh, kind of a social media, uh, vigilante who doxes, which is, he finds out that somebody in politics or, or in a high-level position, he finds out all the dirty stuff they've been doing, like sleeping with children or or being part of human trafficking, or whatever they're doing, or, or embezzling. And he uh, reveals their identity and uh, home address and everything you could to anybody who wants to, who want to hurt these people. So he's doxing these uh, people he considers criminals. Uh, and in, meanwhile, the people he have, has doxed have been being murdered in a copycat way as the police officer's son, who's already in jail and has confessed to the original murder which they're calling the Richard Rowe murders. So, uh, so at the end of the issue, uh, the police officer is attacked and uh, is about to be murdered, and then no one uh, comes onto the scene and saves the police officer, but is unable to uh, uh, apprehend the uh, copycat. So it continues on into the second issue. But uh, at the very end, uh, the police officer's other son, who is kind of like, uh, on again, off again, uh, addict and homeless person. He is murdered by the copycat after uh, no one is unable to apprehend him. So, very interesting, uh, meaty story. Uh, wasn't boring. Uh, it flowed really well. Uh, and I'm really interested to see how that goes. And I'm really interested in seeing how it uh, uh, ties into the ongoing Massiverse. And I will be back with a knife so we can uh, crack into the pre orders. Thank you for your patience. All right, we'll start with week three pre-orders from the Discount Comic Book Service. This is a pretty big week. All the boxes don't really reflect it. I must have the same stuff to the top. Because it was, as opposed to the last week, a very fairly big week in week three. But not as big as, uh, not as big as week uh, one which is coming, let's see, yeah. I guess this wasn't as big a week as I thought it was initially. When I looked at it online, it looked pretty big, but uh, it's still 14 books, 14 books for week three, so that's, that's a fairly heavy week, I would guess. Uh, let's get into these guys. Carefully. Careful if I want to be the way it wants to go. There we go. Thank you. All right. Ah, come on. Excuse 
Excuse me. I apologize. All right. He's up. All right. Here we go. Week three of uh, March begins with Batman, One Bad Day, Raj Al Ghul from, uh, this is written by Tom Taylor with art, which should be excellent by Ivan Rise and Danny Mickey. Uh, and this is the uh, Villain Spotlight uh, cover, premium, I think they're called premium uh, covers by uh, Giuseppe Camincoli and Arif, Ar Arif Pronto. Uh, and there was uh, another version of uh, this issue, another variant, which would have had uh, all of these covers put together as one with all of the villains together with this background and Arkham Asylum burning in the back. I assume it would have been this way. I do not know. Uh, it was, uh, what's that word? Uh, what's, you know when they get, you know when you get a comic and then they, they order too many and they can't fill it, uh, allocated. My, uh, deluxe format, uh, one with all the villains on the cover was allocated, so I, unfortunately, I'll have to get it from eBay or something, because I do kind of want to see if they do it, all of them like this, or if it's like a double gatefold with all of them on there, because that would be even, I think that would be even cooler, but looking forward to reading this, this is a final Batman One Bad Day uh, one shot, and they're putting these out at $8 each, and then uh, three months later, they're going to release them all as $19 hardcovers with uh, no special features, just the same thing with the hardcover, and then you can buy them in a box set for like $125, I would rather just get them uh, the first time for $10 less. All right, here's Plush, issue number five, the penultimate issue of Plush. This is cover B from Tony Fleece. I've uh, been really enjoying this series, as I have all of uh, Doug Wagner and Daniel Hilliard's uh, crazy uh, serial killer-related uh, uh, fiction at Image. So, there you go. Uh, here's one that I've been anticipating. Here is Punisher number 10. This is cover B by Kyle Hotz. It's the first time I've seen this cover, uh, obviously the first time in hand, but I may have not ever seen this cover at all. Uh, I might have seen it online, uh, but I didn't get a close, close look at it. So this, there's a few, uh, a few comics from week one that uh, I almost missed uh, not seeing, uh, but I did see them last night. So, anywho. Next is The Scorch. This is issue uh, number 16. Uh, this is the only uh, Mark Spears uh, variant I picked up for the month. I, I usually, unless, unless it was like the David Mack month where I am, I am more of a Mack fan, uh, I'm not going to be getting the, uh, I'm gonna forget the guy's name again. The month before this, it was the guy who did Ghost Box uh, on uh, Astonishing X-Men. Not Bermejo. I know it's not Bermejo. And uh, go back a couple videos and look in the in the description. You'll know his name. I wrote it like 15, 20 times, so I can never remember his name. But that guy did the ones after Mac, and then uh, the ones coming the month after this are from uh, are a connecting set by uh, Mark Brooks. I'm not going to be getting any of the connecting set by Mark Brooks. And uh, in June, I mean in May, the covers will be by. Uh, uh, Victor Bogdanovich, one of those covers looks really good for a gunslinger, and the rest of them, not so good, so I'll be getting the Bs. But this is the A cover for Scorch from Mark Spears. I remember that guy's name who did the covers after, uh, Mac, like, after, right after I'm done making the video, I remember that guy's name. Here's Carnage, number 11. Uh, this begins Alex Peck Nadell's run on Carnage. Uh, I guess it was made pretty clear on an interview on Pop Culture Philosophers that, uh, Ron V is stepping back from both Venom and Carnage. Uh, he's leaving, uh, leaving Marvel, uh, as so, leaving the symbiotes as so, in the hands of, uh, Alex Bacnadel for Carnage, and, uh, then, uh, Al Ewing will finish off the, uh, Venom run. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer either is running, but I know Carnage is involved in the, uh, Carnage Reigns event that begins, uh, uh, I believe in May. Uh, he'll be writing this and Red Goblin, of course, because he writes both those titles. And then uh, he'll be doing, I believe, the Alpha and Omega issue. So good job, Alex. I'm glad you're getting a few more titles there at Marvel because you're a great writer. 
Uh, here's another one I'm anticipating. Here's Vanish number five, the continuation of uh, Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's uh, originally Substack series, uh, now being published physically at Image. Uh, really enjoyed the first four issues. Uh, they ramped up really good, really, really good. And uh, yeah, really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing how it continues. There's my phone to the floor. Here is Nightwing, issue number 102. This is cover A by uh, Redondo. And Redondo is now on to uh, cover duties only for this arc. And the main art will be by, uh, what's Moore's first name? Travis Moore. Travis Moore is uh, taking over this five issue arc. It might be even only a four issue arc. Uh, but I do believe, uh, yeah. Redondo. I believe Bruno Redondo will be back for uh, kind of a gimmicky issue in June, I believe. Like, it'll all be like first person through the eyes of a character, but it'll all be drawn by Bruno Redondo. So, it'll be an interesting gimmick issue that I'll definitely be reading because I do read Nightwing. It's been one of my favorites, and the writing was written by Tom Taylor, if I did not mention it. Here is my favorite series at DC uh, Batman Superman World's Finest. This is issue number 13. It's the beginning of arc number three. Uh, written by Mark Wade with art by the Impeccable and Super Fast Dan Mark Wade. I mean, not Mark Wade. Super Fast Dan Mora. Super Fast Dan Mora. He's gonna. He's been doing this. He's been doing Turtles and uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, he's about to be doing Shazam. He's doing Batman Black and White in another book. Uh, and even though he's super fast at his art, he's always the art is always super super excellent. One of my favorite uh, artists. Uh, that has come along since uh, I've started collecting comics again uh, uh, during the pandemic. Here's Amazing Spider-Man issue number 22. It's probably secondary to my cover of the month for March. Really awesome John Romero Jr. Uh, villain type cover. Not sure who this guy is. I guess he appeared in uh, Brand New Day uh, in that arc of stories. Uh, and issues that were written way back when by, by Zeb Wells. But this is the uh, new story arc, which is going to explain why everybody uh, was uh, all all had their hate on for Peter uh, at the beginning of uh, this run of Spider-Man, why uh, Mary Jane is uh, married to Paul and has those kids. So we're going to find out all that within the next uh, three or four issues. Here is Earth Divers, issue number six. This is the end of uh, arc number one. This cover is by Daniel Irizarry. I'm unfamiliar with Daniel Irizarry. This is my first peek at his work, but awesome skull cover. Uh, heads up to Brian McClay. If you ever look at my channel, there's an awesome skull cover for you, my friend. Uh, this series is by uh, Stephen Graham Jones and David Guion Fleece. Uh, and it's part of IEDW's uh, new uh, Originals uh, initiative that they began in the summer of 2022. And this, uh, I think this is turning out, is going to be the only ongoing series out of those uh, five or seven series that they made a little one-shot uh, giveaway for. Because uh, issue seven uh, is on the solicitation for May. So looking forward to seeing how the first arc ends there. And here we have uh, the final issue of Inferno Girl Red from uh, Durso, who does the writing and the art, and Groom, Monte, and Carrie, uh, who are all uh, heavy mainstays at the uh, Massive Verse, on the Massive Verse books. Uh, so, I've been enjoying the series so far. Uh, hopefully it uh, ends up with a bang. I guess this originally came out all in one as a hardcover Kickstarter. Uh, I did not know about that at the time. And then I also need to get a uh, 1 in 25 for issue number 1 uh, with the uh, uh, that type of cover. Uh, there's a cover that's been on uh, Radiant Red, uh, Radiant... I think it was on... No, it was on Radiant Black. It was on Rogue Sun. It was on Dead Lucky. And then it's also on this. And I can't remember her name, but... Uh, uh, it's just a cover where they're the, the, uh, the big uh, radiant black robots at the top shooting powers down onto the main character in the middle of the bottom. Uh, you'd know what the cover is if you know what I'm talking about, but uh, I can't remember anyone's name. This 
morning. So, Undiscovered Country, number 24. This is the end of story arc, uh, issue number four, which is called Disunity. Uh, first time uh, spying this cover. Did I get a variant? I did get a variant. Let's see if I can see who's by. Can't tell by the signature. But can always look at the front page. All right. Cover B by, this is cover B by Elena Casagrande. So this ends uh, arc four. I've been uh, reading uh, Undiscovered Country in trade uh, for the first three arcs, but then when I finished uh, arc number three, it was right as uh, arc four and the one shot that precedes arc four was beginning. So I decided to jump on monthly. Uh, now that I have them all together, I will read it as I always have, and it's one big chunk. Here we got uh, Grimm, issue number nine, I believe, issue nine. Well, issue nine, these are the Florentino uh, Reaper variants. Uh, Jenny Frizen did the Reaper variants for uh, the first arc, and Florentino has stepped in and done the Reaper variants for uh, arc number two. And they've all been pretty cool. They've all been kind of like a uh, kind of heavy metal tinge sort of thing, for the most part. First, first couple were, and then the second one, third one was the guy standing on the balcony, and now we got a Hell's Angel, uh, Hell's Angel uh, Reaper for that one. And to finish off week three is Blue Book, issue number two from James Tanyan the fourth, and Michael Avon Oming. This is cover B by. Doesn't say, but I know who it is. It's, uh, I believe it's. The guy who does uh, Texas Blood, I might be wrong. Nope, it's the guy who did the, it's the guy who did uh, the the plot, the plot. Uh, Joshua Hickson uh, does cover B. I'm a fan of Joshua Hickson's art since I read the plot, and that is a pretty cool cover there. All right, next box up in the pre-orders. Uh, these are an FOC pre-order for the final week of March that I ordered from uh, Economics and Comics because uh, Discount Comic Service did not uh, did not make this one available on their site at FOC, and nor did uh, uh, the other place, Things From Another World. I've been trying real hard not to uh, use Things From Another World, and they've been making it uh, easier by not ever having uh, anything I need to get as a catch-all, and Economics and Comics has been very... Uh, very good at filling in that gap. So here we got two of the same. This is Star Wars High Republic, The Blade, the final issue, issue number four. This is the Black History Month variant by Mahanini, who is uh, it's a key, uh, it's Kiev Trennis from the original arc of... Uh, Star Wars High Republic, that's cool. I was unaware of that before I had it in hand. Uh, very cool. Uh, but uh, Mahanini is doing the A covers on uh, House of Slaughter for this current Butcher's, uh, Butcher's Return arc. And he has also graced us with this uh, two copies here of the uh, Blade Number 4 Black History Month cover. And then... Uh, We'll get into our second box. This is the last week of books from uh, Discount Complex Service. Both of these boxes came uh, in the same week because they switched my shipment from uh, UPS. And my last like seven, eight boxes that I've gotten uh, for Discount Complex Service has been from UPS, but they switched me back to uh, FedEx. And FedEx usually they'll ship it out to me on a. Uh, on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and I'll usually have it uh, by uh, Sunday sometimes even, and uh, Monday at the very latest, so you should be seeing my first week unboxing. Today is, uh, for today, actually, today is the, well, today is the uh, 5th of April, and that is uh, week one, and a lot of books I'm looking forward to today that I'll be seeing uh, uh, on the weekend come in from uh, Discount Comic Service. So, interestingly enough, although I do have 21 items for week four, it's really, I believe, only uh, 
10 or 11 books because there's a lot of uh, I got a lot of uh, multi covers here for Star Wars and etc but yeah so 21 books for last week and I did this again so I got some more bags and boards so I'll do something else so I'll start it this way all right, here's one I'm gonna recoup a bag and board. This is Marvel Previews. Uh, uh, discussing uh, Ultimate Invasion. Uh, gonna be checking that book out. Got a lot of complaints online that it's a $9 comic book. We'll order your books from uh, Discount Comic Book Service and get it for like four fifty. That's what I'm planning to do. Anywho, very cool. Uh, yep. And then in the back, another series I'm uh, anticipating is the new Philip Kennedy Johnson uh, Hulk series, Incredible Hulk number one, coming in May. Or is it June? It's either May or June. And here we have the penultimate issue for Strange Academy Finals. Uh, this is covers by David Lopez. This is a David Lopez variant. I always get a variant for Strange Academy, and I'll probably have another Strange Academy because I get the trading card covers as well. So this was a month where there was two different variants for Strange Academy. So Strange Academy number five. Uh, so number six will be out, uh, I'm presuming, in uh, April here. And then I'll go back and read everything. So this is the series we over. And we're going back to High Republic The Blade. This is cover B. And cover B. This might also be David Lopez. I'm not sure I gotta look at it. There's a lot of covers for uh, Republic. Uh, the, the Blade number four has a lot of covers. Let's put it that way. Oops, that doesn't help. So it doesn't look like Ken Lashley, so I'm gonna say this is Mike McCone. So I'm gonna say this is a Mike McCone variant. Cover B, Mike McCone. And the second one. And then we have High Republic uh, Improper, the Marvel series, issue number seven. This is, uh, sorry. Is this? What is Yeah, it must be Yannick Paquette. This is cover cover B by Yannick Paquette. Let's see if it shows it in that order. Yeah. There's only one variant. I guess I could have made it easier. Because it's him and somebody else. So. Yannick Paquette, uh, number seven. Uh, so is the High Republic. Thanks for putting up with me. My blindness. Uh, here's a second. Uh, they do with all sort of public books. Here's your from aforementioned Strange Academy Finals issue number five. This is the uh, David Walker. No, it's not David Walker. Oh, Dustin Weaver. Dustin Weaver, a trading card variant. This one is Eric and Aldi. So go all the way back with uh, stats on the back. Nope. Some trading card covers have uh, all the trading card stats on the back, but this one does not. Here is another variant for Star Wars High Republic, The Blade. This is cover E uh, from uh, Peach Momoko. This is a Women's History Month variant. Uh, Barash Sylvain is the character here. Uh, pretty cool for Peach. It looks like she's kind of holding a light baseball bat, not a light saber. And the second one. And speaking of Star Wars High Republic, at least the artists of such, here is Something is Killing the Children, issue number 30, the end of uh, our current arc. Uh, this is cover B by Ariel Anandito, who has uh, been the main artist for uh, Star Wars The High Republic since the beginning. Uh, 
Uh, this, is a, this is a beautiful piece of uh, Virgin Art here for cover B of issue number 30. And I believe there's a uh, either a reveal or a uh, one in uh, that ratio that has uh, the same cover minus the blood. Now we've got a second copy. Here's another recoup backboard they've given me for DC Connect, which is a, what do you call that? It doesn't, it's a book that doesn't need a banging backboard, it's a previous book. So, recoup the banging board over there. Where they, we got Flash 800 and Wonder Woman 800 coming in May, I believe. Or June, June, I already, May has already been gone and uh, ordered, I can't believe it. I'm looking forward to June already. Uh, here is uh, Detective Comics, issue 1070. Uh, this is by Rom V. Rom V is going to continue his uh, duties on his DC uh, books. I believe he's only doing uh, Detective right now, but he's uh, creating a new super team uh, called The Vigil, who I believe guest star in this issue. Uh, and The Vigil is going to be kicking off in May. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, Looks like it's going to be kind of a beefy type of run uh, slash storyline. All right, here is Thor issue number 32 from Torin Grombuck uh, with art by uh, Gedeon. Uh, looks like, uh, if I look at the back cover of this, I'll remember, the, remember the guy's name, Nick Klein. Looks like Nick Klein is uh, jumping off of Thor as of the last issue, uh, and Gideon, at least for this issue, is uh, filling in here. Uh, so now Cates is off of Thor, and Nick Klein is off of Thor. I think I'll give it till the end of this arc, and then I, I will be dropping Thor. Uh, I'm looking, kind of, I'm looking for a reason to drop Thor ever since I started collecting it at issue 10. And now it looks like I'm about to get my chance, because I'll just replace Thor with Incredible Hulk. Here is my obligatory Invincible Iron Man, issue number four. This is uh, the cover A by K.L. New. It goes great uh, cover A art. Uh, and you're going to find out who's been uh, murdering his friends and trying to uh, put Tony down on the ground this issue. And I guess it has something to do with uh, Krakoa and the mutants. Uh, so it'll start to all tie in together there. Since uh, Jerry Duggan, who is writing... Uh, this run of Iron Man uh, is also writing uh, the flagship uh, Uncanny X-Men series. Here is Star Wars The High Republic, issue number seven. This is cover A. This is, oh, cover A is by Yannick Paquette. So who, so the other one, Eesh. this must be a... Uh, This must be Alejandro uh, Sanchez. It sure doesn't look like that. The signature on here is like, it looks like Viacus or something. Vicus. That's what the signature looks like. I mean, that's what, maybe it's A. Sanchez and Scribble, but this is a Yannick Paquette doing cover A. And the second copy. Here is Star Wars, more Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. The High Republic, cover A by uh, Giuseppe Camoncoli. Really looking forward to seeing how this series ends. It's been ramping up. And this is uh, solicited as having the, the single greatest uh, display of lightsaber prowess or battle in history. In this issue, we shall see. And we're going to close off the month of March with the A cover to something that's going to children uh, from uh, Werther de la Dera. It has to be Werther de la Dera. Yeah, de la Dera. De la Dera, however you pronounce his last name. And we got a second puppy. So, alright. So that's a pretty big uh, unboxing. Looks like about a uh, a good pile of books here to read. Uh, I've been getting behind on my uh, library reading. I have uh, like 25 books that have to be due back uh, due to uh, being, uh, I've kept them as long as I can possibly keep them. I didn't quite get to actually read them all. 
Oh, I just finished uh, Honest Sunbeam from Tully Walden, which was really good. I read uh, Justice League versus the Legion of Superheroes from uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Godlewski. Uh, it was totally uh, torn apart uh, on other channels as the most boring, no action type of series that has ever been written. Uh, you either, you either like what Venice is doing or, 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 you, or you hate it, you know. I, I admit that freely. Uh, I liked it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say it was action-packed. I'm not going to try to defend it in that way. But uh, I will say it was uh, a well-done, uh, put-together story. Uh, and it didn't put me to sleep reading it by any means. And then I just finished uh, Flashpoint Beyond from uh, Jeff Johns with Zermonico on the art. And it was also written by Jeremy Adams and... Uh, the guy who did Teen Titans Academy, uh, Sheridan, Sheridan, Jer uh, Jer Jeremy Adams, and Zermonico on the art, and then it had some, uh, Janine, uh, backup pages, or final pages, and then the very last pages were by, uh, Gary Frank, which tied it into Doomsday Clock, which, of course, at the very beginning, there was the mime and the mime and the girl from, uh, Doomsday Clock at the very beginning of the series, and at the very end, they show new characters who are trying to resurrect uh, Dr. Manhattan, I believe, on the very last couple of pages. They were doing something with the inversion field machine at the end of the series. I'm not sure what that means. I'm sure if I were uh, reading uh, the new Golden Age books, uh, that would make more sense to me now. Because I think it's somebody who's going to appear in the new uh, GSA books. But uh, basically, uh, Batman... Uh, Batman uh, meddles with time, Bruce Wayne Batman meddles with time to resurrect Thomas Wayne Batman and the Flashpoint, uh, Flashpoint timeline uh, to try and see if he can uh, redeem his father, although his father has tried to murder him in the, in the, in the real timeline working for Bane and stuff. And Bruce is a really forgiving guy, he really loves his father. Uh, I can I can imagine that. We all, we all love our father, so. But by the end, Bruce uh, does uh, end up redeeming his father, and uh, the uh, Flashpoint timeline is uh, contained within the Batcave, kind of like uh, Superman's, uh, the little uh, bottle city, the Candor. It's like, Superman has the bottle city of Candor in his uh, lair, now Batman has the bottle city of Flashpoint for his dad and... And his mom, the Joker, and Martha Wayne, the Joker. And uh, now Bruce has, I mean, now Thomas has a new uh, Robin that he's working with. And there's about to be a Kryptonian invasion by uh, Jor-El. Uh, I wonder if uh, they're ever going to have another Flashpoint continuation that takes place after Flashpoint Beyond. Because they do leave it off on a pretty good cliffhanger. But maybe it will take place in some of the new Golden Age stuff by Johns. And I forgot when I opened uh, my my Economics and Comics stuff. Uh, Economics and Comics having a huge month in April. Uh, on Friday, this coming Friday, two days from now, uh, you can order uh, Speechless, issue number five, uh, with uh, amazing cover by Lucio Perillo. Uh, it's his own uh, original creation, which is a demon type Conan type of character. Uh, and you'll get to learn uh, Lucio's process and his studio and all of the tools he uses and what his new character is all about. And it's all taking place in Speechless number five. Uh, order your copy is coming uh, Friday evening on economicsandcomics.com. Uh, and then uh, the following week, You've probably already ordered, if you're with Economics and Comics, you ordered your copy of uh, Michael McCombs' 8 Billion Genies number 8, uh, I Dream of Genie homage cover. Uh, those will be uh, shipping out uh, on the 14th, I believe, or the week of the 14th, because uh, that's when uh, uh, 8 Billion Genies finally comes to an end. And then also that week, there will be uh, a pre-order for uh, a variant with a homage homage to the Gremlins movie poster for the new Simone Kudransky series, Something Epic, uh, coming from Image, I believe, in uh, May. Uh, 
And this cover is a uh, homage to the Gremlins movie poster, which is a double homage because the creature inside the box, if you've seen the cover of the Gremlins movie poster, it's a guy holding the box like so. Holding the box like so, and then there's little hands creeping out of the box. Those hands are a double homage uh, of... Uh, Oh, well, you'll know it when you see it. Go to the Economics Comments and look at that stuff. It's all really cool. Uh, so, but as for me, I will be back uh, probably uh, Monday or Tuesday next week because I should get my first week box, which uh, has uh, uh, John Lee's The Nasty number one, which is my most anticipated book of 2022 by far since his last series at Aftershock, unfortunately, got swept under the rug because of the bankruptcy. Uh, I... I think it's going to be uh, coming back. I hope so. But I've been really looking forward to some new John Lees. And speaking of new John Lees, I do have the uh, digital sync number 11 that uh, probably as soon as I start uploading this video, I'm going to download into this iPad I'm filming on and uh, take a peek through that because I'm really looking forward to that. I did the Kickstarter for sync number 11. Uh, I got an email today saying uh, my... Uh, Sync number 11 uh, Iron Tooth Jack t-shirt has uh, been shipped, uh, and I'll probably be wearing that in a future video as soon as I get it, because I'm really psyched about that t-shirt. And then the physical copy of Sync number 11, as well as a variant cover to Dig number one I picked up, uh, those will be coming uh, probably here in April, I hope, sometime in April. Uh, hopefully by the end of April, and I'll be able to show those off too. And I also did finally break my cold streak on giveaways i won a uh, trade paperback on cole's comics claims uh, a few weeks back uh, I've, I've been holding off uh, finishing this video or starting this video hoping that would arrive it has not arrived yet but when it does arrive i will uh, show it off and uh, give the credit to cole's where credit is due and blake cole and cole and blake uh thank you for uh uh, having your giveaway every week, and I'm happy I finally uh, broke my cold streak on my giveaway. Uh, finally won one. Uh, anyway, we'll see you guys uh, probably this time next week at the latest uh, with our next video. So everybody out there take care, and we'll see you in the next one.